in today's show. We're previewing all of the action for Wednesday in the NBA. Mick Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by PrizePix. Check out PrizePix.com and use the promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app today. PrizePix is daily fantasy made easy. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. And available on all platforms. So let's swing in. Let's have a look at what's going on on Wednesday. There are nine games on. First game is the Wizards taking on the Philadelphia 76ers. No Bradley Beal. So we are expecting a little bit more out of Spencer Dinwiddie. A little bit more than nothing would be great. Because that's what he's been giving us most nights. Um, This is a good opportunity to have Dinwiddie. And maybe trade him for a top 100 player as long as Beal is out. Maybe Beal doesn't come back. Who knows? But Dinwiddie's guy, someone we're going to really watch here. Also, the tank. Tom Bryant, where is... What's he going to do? Is he going to play? Because it is the second night of a back-to-back. We haven't heard anything about the plan for him. I would be staggered if he played, but we just don't know that. So that would mean maybe Dan Gafford is back in the rotation, back playing his 21-22 minutes, and back being an excellent stream for Wednesday, and back showing the Wizards that, yes, he is the best center on this team and not those other two. But it'll probably last one game, and we'll see you later. It might not even happen at all, because Bryant might actually play 20 minutes in the back-to-back. It would seem irresponsible, but it might happen. For the 76, as Shake Milton remains out, so Tyrese Maxey's going to play big minutes, 37, 38, 40, who knows? He's playing a lot of minutes at the moment. He played really well last game without Embiid. Embiid will return in this game, though. So that will impact Maxey's value. Um, And then you look at Seth Curry, who has really struggled in the last two games since returning from his injury. We're still holding him. He was shooting at a, you know, let's say historically good level. And while he is a great shooter, some of that, especially the two-point stuff, it was probably destined to come back to earth. The Magic and the Pacers. Truma Akiki. We know that Truma has been putting up some really big steal numbers. He's had some hot shooting nights. I would advise selling high on him. But we also want to watch how he is used. Does he close games over Mo Bamba? Does he push to 30 minutes a night? Well, he hasn't really. He's had 17, 25, and 24 the last three games, somehow putting up value in that time. I don't really trust it, but he's doing it. So watching how that looks, and then watching also Mo Bamba. One, two, three, four, five. Um, yeah, where, where, where is he at? If the yokai that is John Isaac ever returns, where does Bamba fit? I'm guessing on the bench. Is Bamba traded? That's a possibility as well. He has some big games early this season, but overall, I still think that he is not a particularly good NBA starting center. The big one here, though, is the Pacers because DeMontis Sabonis is out. The Dart is out. Goga Badadze. Ashe Brissett's going to return, but we're probably going to get Isaiah Jackson starting again. He played 29 minutes last game. Foul trouble is always going to be an issue for him, I think. Well, actually, that's not true. He has cut that back lately, but it's still I'm still worried about it slightly. Um, but another big opportunity for him to put up some big games. It's pretty much a great time to, to stream him in while these guys are out. Maybe an opportunity to sell high. So remember, last game took four centers being out for him to get there. Maybe Turner never plays again for this team. Maybe they pass on Badadze for Jackson. That's possible. But the path that he had last game where everyone was out is not what's going to happen every game moving forward. So stream him in, maybe try and sell high or just enjoy what's happening. I'm not enjoying what's happening with Chris Duarte though. Um, he's having opportunities here with Brogdon out. Wouldn't say he's grasping them with his both hands. He's doing all right, but he's not doing anything special. And I'm not convinced that he remains a must roster player. Because it's like, oh yeah, well, Brogdon will get shut down or Brogdon won't play or whatever. That's fine. Brogdon's not playing now. And Duarte's not doing anything good. So what changes as we move forward? I'm not saying that he's a drop, but I'm also not particularly excited by what he's doing. The Hornets and the Celtics. PJ Washington Jr., 
This bloke, man. Like, he comes out, he'll play 27 minutes, have 18 points on seven shots with three blocks. And you go, holy shit, here we go. Then he plays 18 minutes and has two points. He's so wildly up and down. And even with Ubre and Haywood out, he hasn't really done anything. Now, Haywood is out again on Wednesday. Ubre is likely to return, but Jalen McDaniels is out. So there is another chance for some extra minutes for PJ. But he's not doing anything that gets me fired up. Nothing at all. And then we look at Kelly Ubre, who does, again, have that opportunity without Haywood to see his minutes and usage ramp up. He's been wildly inconsistent at times this season, and on a fully healthy team, he struggled. But there are nights where he comes out and he drops 13 threes, and you go, what is this? what's this crap? Like, where did this come from? And then he'll have seven points on 12 shots in 22 minutes. Very hard to... Um, very hard to peg, I guess, where his value sits. For the Celtics, last game, Al Horford played a lot. Don't know why, but he did. And the numbers were okay. But that 32 minutes were the most he played in the previous three games. In fact, in the two games prior to that, he played 40 minutes combined. Am I buying that Al Horford's back to a 30-minute a night guy? Nah, I don't think so. But this will give us an extra data point to be able to see where he sits. And then Marcus Smart, he's been really good. I think he's like, since he returned to action in the last five games, he's like a plus 120 or something crazy. Maybe that's insane, but he's really big plus minus since he came back. And Dennis Schroeder is his backup now. Smart is playing well. I think he gets underappreciated in fantasy circles and real life circles. So just watching what he can do and continue to hold Schroeder into that bench role is something that I am watching. But I don't need to watch too much to know that Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy because it's just straightforward. It is the best daily fantasy option out there for the NBA. It's easy to use. You pick two to five players and an over-under projection, and that's it. You can win up to 10 times on your entry. It's just you versus those projected numbers. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. It's safe and the fast withdrawals. It's a great feature on Price Picks as well. Use the award-winning app, which you can get on the App Store and on Google Play. Whatever prop you can think of, points or steals or rebounds or threes or fantasy points and even multiple sports. Chuck a football one in there with a hockey one, with a basketball one, and combine all those entries together. So for a limited time, Price Picks has an exclusive no-brainer of an offer for all of our users. Users get 50 bucks for free. If a player in your first Price Picks entry scores a single point, but you must use the code NBA. That's right. This is an exclusive offer available to Locked On fans. Sign up today and use the code NBA for $50 for free. If a player in your first Price Picks entry scores a single point, Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. TurboTax, it's tax time coming up for you guys over there in the States. And people think unusual circumstances mean complicated taxes. But for TurboTax live experts, that's what makes things interesting. They really fire up when things get complicated on the tax on the tax side of things. That really turns them on. We have all unique lives. Whether you've just invested in crypto for the first time, you own an up-and-coming small business, you're raising rambunctious twins, whatever it is. Luckily, TurboTax Live has experts who can answer your tax questions, walk you through the whole process, or do your taxes from start to finish. They help you get every deduction you deserve, no matter your unique situation. And you can talk to a TurboTax Live expert through your phone or computer without leaving your house. TurboTax Live experts are here to help you however you need. And if you need an extra hand, hand your taxes off to them and they'll do it all for you. To TurboTax Live experts, an interesting life can mean an even greater refund. Visit TurboTax.com to learn more. You do your thing. They've got your taxes. Into it, TurboTax Live. NBA trade deadline, February 10th, Thursday, 3 p.m. So we're doing a show at Lockdown NBA from 2 p.m. Eastern through to 4 p.m. Eastern. Kim Beck is going to be hosting it. Johnny Corrales is going to be there. This dickhead, Josh Lloyd, is going to be on the show as well, breaking down all of the moves that go down from a real-life perspective, talking about the moves that don't go down from a real-life perspective, talking about the fantasy implications of every trade as well. So head to the Locked On NBA YouTube channel, get more of this stupid face on your screen, and enjoy everything that's got to happen on the NBA trade deadline. Thursday, February the 10th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Let's look at the next game. It is the Grizzlies and the Knicks. Desmond Bain, been playing pretty well. Dylan Brooks probably won't be back. Bain's value continues to be really high. I still maintain that there is going to be a drop-off when Brooks returns because somebody's got to yeah, give way to for Brooks to take contested mid-range twos. Somebody's got to take yeah, a step back somewhat. I don't think it'll be Ja Morant. I think it'll have to be Bain. But we haven't really seen this trio play together. So this still remains a question mark. But for now, the sell-high window gets pumped up. Well, Brandon Clark's fading. Is this another fade for him? Is this another 19-minute game with Kyle Anderson back? If so, maybe he becomes a drop. We're not yet. Well, we're watching that really closely. For the Knicks, it was a stinker from Ron Barrett last game. Um, he'd been playing well, but he's still outside the top 100 over the last two weeks. So it's not like he's blowing our doors off. Giggity. 
we need him to do more and do it consistently better than that. And I'm not sure that he can. Also want to watch uh, Mitchy Robinson. And Mitch Robinson says, I'll take it from here. Because while he's starting, like, it's just not fun. It's not exciting. The numbers are low. Occasionally he has blocks or good field goal percentage. The rest of the time, it's just like someone's farting in your mouth. Like, you might be marginally entertained, but in the end, like, you feel like vomiting. Uh, <laughs> who wants to deal with that on a nightly basis? I made myself laugh with that. Um, who wants to deal with that on a nightly basis? I think you still have to roster him, but man, the value for Mitchie Robinson has dropped pretty considerably. Let's look at the Cavs and the Rockets. No Darius Garland. I reckon it just might be, hey, we're playing the Rockets, take the night off. So does that mean we get Brandon Goodwin again? Goodwin played 27 minutes last game, started the second half over Dean Wade. Played well. Also shot the ball really well, so it's pretty unlikely to continue, but maybe as a stream option. And then also want to watch Dean Wade. I am not convinced that starting Dean Wade is the way at all. But they do it. Sometimes they play him 30, sometimes they play him 19 minutes. Which ones are going to be? I do not know the answer to that. For the Rockets, I want to watch KJ Martin because I am very interested to see where the minutes go. He's a guy that I think has got 14 team league value at the moment, maybe even 12. If Jay Sean Tate is traded, which I don't think they will, I think they should, but I don't think they will. Or even if they just say, hey, KJ is going to play now. I think, so I think he's a better option. He's very interesting for me to watch. And then cousin Kevin Porter. He's playing much better of late since he returned. The numbers are up. The shooting is up. He's not actually taking free throws, so he can't miss them. He's playing at a high level at the moment. So maybe it's a good sell high. But we also just want to watch what he's up to. This has been good. The Thunder and the Mavericks, we know there's no Shea Gildas Alexander. So Trey Mann will probably get another start, but it will be continue to be that mishmash of Maladon and Mann and Jerome, meaning no one has value. I'd say almost definitely yes. We're also probably going to get Jeremiah Robinson Earl back into the rotation after he was sat out last game so he could, I don't know, fuck around in the G League or whatever was going on there. So it's going to be a whole weird situation. So Darius Baisley played well last game. Do not trust Darius Baisley for a second. Do not. You know, Wiggins and Robinson Earl are going to cut into his playing time. Just don't trust him. You can't. I don't think you can trust Reggie Bullock either. But the minutes are up without Tim Hardaway. And there is a chance he can at least become a three-point streamer. I'm not interested in grabbing him in most spots. But if you are looking for threes, maybe he can help you. And then with Kristaps Porzingis out, Marquez Chris put up big numbers. 19 minutes last game. He's going to have an opportunity for good minutes again. And maybe he can even outproduce Maxi Kleber because he is on a permanent basis a much better fantasy producer than what Kleber is. So we're watching Chris and his production in this game. For the Nets and the Kings, no Lamarcus Aldridge. So Nick Claxton, what does, what does? That's not the right word. What does the minutes look like? What do the minutes look like? What do they do with Dayron Sharp? How does Blake Griffin fit in? Is Claxton going to play 27? That makes him a 12-team league guy for now, for sure. But we don't know that yet. And then Paddy Mills. Jimmy Harden will be back. Kyrie Irving's playing. Mills is a fringy sort of player to me who, when Kyrie's out, is probably a 12-team league guy, but when they're healthy, isn't. So watching how he looks here is interesting. For the Kings, I don't know about Darren Fox. I don't know whether he's going to play, but we want to watch Darren Fox, not Darren Fox. We want to watch Davion Mitchell's role without Fox or with Fox. Without Fox, he's a good streamer. With Fox, he's a very deep league player. And then Budrick Heald. He's been shit house. He's got the opportunity here, but he's been terrible. Can he turn it around? I am not that confident uh, that he can. The Nuggets and the Jazz. Aaron Gordon is playing well. It is a back-to-back -back for Denver. What can Gordo do? Can he keep some of this solid form up? The minutes have been down the last few, but they've had some comfortable wins. Yeah, I just want to see whether this is the turning of the corner for Gordon. I'm not convinced, though, that it is. And then also, Monty Morris. Can he do something that gets me interested or is it just going to be boring old Monty Morris 10-4-4? Four, four? Which is fine, I guess. I'd much rather, you know, 17-3-8. and eight. And he had a good game last time, but is it back to boringness uh, for him? Well, for the Jazz, of course, there's no Joe Ingles. There might be no Donovan Mitchell. There might be no Rudy Gobert. In fact, I'd be pretty surprised if Donovan Mitchell plays given the report from Tony Jones that he's still dealing with symptoms. So Jordan Clarkson gets a boost. Mike Conley gets a boost. And watching how they fill in around with no Joe Ingles as well and likely no Mitchell... What, if, what does it mean if Trent Forrest plays? All that stuff is still up in the air for the Utah Jazz, and it's something we need to be focusing in on. But maybe the Jazz need a built bar because they just need something to take their mind off their losing streak. And instead of reaching for a sugary candy bar, why don't you do it with built bar? Because it's low in ca calories, low in fat, low in sugar, low in carbs.
but it's high in protein. And you normally think of a protein bar, you grab something, you go, oh, I guess I've got to have this because it's healthy for me, but you got to hold your nose to swallow it down. That's what she said in those sort of situation because it tastes like crap. Whereas a built bar tastes delicious. Absolutely fantastic taste on a built bar. Tastes just like a candy bar. Whether it's cookies and cream, the goat flavor, or coconut, or raspberry, or mint brownie, or orange, or peanut butter brownie, or salted caramel. Built Bar's got all of the flavors you could possibly want. So head to built.com, use our code LOCK15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and get yourself 15% off your orders of delicious Built Bars. Built Bar is built different. Next game, last game, Blazers, Lakers. Larry Nance, I'm sure, is going to be out again. Bob Covington's going to get those minutes. He might shoot poorly, but we don't really care. We care about him getting defensive stats and then coming in big, big numbers. And I also want to watch Trendon Watford. No Zala, no Nance, no Little. Watford was starting to play in 20 minutes a night. Hurt his ankle last game. Hopefully he's all right. Is it going to be him or Alibi that gets that boost? Watford's a very interesting deeper league option, I think. And then for the Blazers, not for the Blazers, the other team, the Lakers, there's no LeBron. So Monk's going to start, you would imagine. And I think he's going to put up good numbers. He's playing really well. How does he look? How does Russell Westbrook look? Who quietly is putting up better numbers, much better numbers. And without LeBron, it enables him to stuff the stat sheet a little bit more. Let's look at some back-to-back streams for Wednesday, Thursday. There's two teams we're looking at here, the Kings and the Lakers, who have this combination of games. So we're looking at streaming Stan Johnson, Chemezi Metu, Austin Reeves, Damian Jones, Avery Bradley, and Taylor Horton Tucker. Not an inspiring list for sure, but it is a back-to-back. So you get two for the price of one. So Stanley Johnson's 30 minutes across two games, or 60 minutes combined, you might actually get 14 and 10 with two steals and two blocks. And that's not bad for one ad. Let's look at some value ads for nine cat leagues for Wednesday. The Discman, CD Arsman, he might start. He probably will start in place of Darius Garland. You got Maxi Kleber and Marquise Chris with no Porzingis. Jeremy Lamb in Indiana, Cody Martin, Eric Gordon, Tory Craig. Tom Bryant, maybe. I don't know if he's going to play through the back-to-back. Otherwise, that's Dan Gafford's name in that place. Kessler Edwards and Contavious Caldwell-Pope. Isaiah Jackson's not on this list because he has been added in so many of our advanced leagues that we track. He's up to like 88% rostered in those leagues. So uh, this is a 50% roster cutoff that I use here. For deeper leagues, you've got Stan Johnson, Denny Avdia, Isaac Okoro, Grant Williams, and the Oklahoma City Mudflap, Kenrich Williams, Rudy Gay, Dwight Powell, Rajon Rondo, Corey Kispert, and Brandon Goodwin. For points leagues, I use a 50% Yahoo rostered cutoff. So Isaiah Jackson's right at the top. Followed by Chetty Osman, DeAnthony Melton, Nick Claxton, Dorian Finney-Smith, Justin Holiday, Marquise Chris, Cody Martin, Mason Plumley, and Darius Baisley. That will do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you are here on YouTube, thumb it up. Leave your comments down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.